get a lot of boxes delivered to my doorstep. I bet you do too. Over 36 million packages are delivered every day in the US. 36 million packages. That's a lot of boxes and a lot of packaging. Most of it, plastic. In fact, some 40% of single-use plastics produced are for packaging and are thrown away after just one use. Any discussion on plastics or pollution usually starts out by describing the sheer scale of the problem, like I just did. But I worry that we may be so overwhelmed with reminders of the pollution challenges we face that we're not adopting the many planet-compatible solutions that are right in front of us. In packaging alone, there are viable alternatives being made with everything from seaweed to crab shells and even banana leaves. But the problem of plastic pollution is still increasing 9% annually. If such creative solutions exist, what's the holdup? I can best speak to my industry, packaging, where I'm known as Mushroom Megan. Hi, nice to meet you. Every day, I work with mushrooms to create truly sustainable alternatives to plastic foam, like the packaging in those 36 million boxes shipping every day, protecting electronics, furniture, even small and fragile items like cosmetics or wine bottles. In 2021, over two million pieces of packaging made from mushrooms were produced globally. And all of the packaging made from those mushrooms, once having served their purpose of protecting fragile things from breaking, is, guess what, turned into nutrient-dense compost. Even if packaging made from mushrooms makes its way into the ocean, it is ocean-safe and leaves no toxic substances or chemicals. How does that happen? When we make packaging from mushrooms, we harness the incredible technology of nature. Just two simple ingredients, mushroom mycelium and the inner woody core of hemp stalks naturally bind together into a beautiful, durable material, no chemicals or hidden ingredients. By utilizing hemp stalks, we're repurposing a piece of the plant that is otherwise wasted. And by utilizing mushroom mycelium, packaging can be grown with minimal energy and a fraction. I'm talking less than 1% of the water consumption required to produce a piece of expanded polystyrene, which you know as styrofoam. Packaging made from mushrooms? I know, I couldn't believe it either when I was first introduced to the concept in 2010 while studying mechanical engineering at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Going into college, I definitely didn't expect to become Mushroom Megan, but now there's no looking back. On day one of classes, I learned about a company that was using resources that are normally considered waste and of low value like corn husks, seed holes, and sawdust, and combining them as a feedstock with mushroom mycelium to create natural, compostable replacements for plastic foams. It was presented to us as a gold standard for the kind of meaningful, planet-improving solutions that our influential professor, Bert Swerzy, insisted we pursue. Don't do nonsense, was Professor Swerzy's regular reminder to us as engineering students. A no-nonsense innovation is one that benefits people, the planet, and still leaves room for profits. Instead of focusing on making something new and shiny, it means focusing on solutions that directly address real planetary problems and offer an alternative that people will actually use. Often, the answer to a complex problem is right in front of us, or in the case of mushroom mycelium, right under our feet. 
Being made by nature means it can be unmade by nature. A customer receives a box and throws the packaging not into the garbage, but into the garden. There, it adds nutrition to the soil, enhancing plant growth and soil health instead of becoming pollution, leaching chemicals, and lingering in our ecosystems. It does its job, protecting items in transit, and then rejoins the cycles of life when its use is through. What could make more sense than that? But here's the challenge. I often encounter a lot of resistance because people are so familiar with the usual plastic foams that it's hard to think beyond them. I get all kinds of questions about what mycelium packaging is like. Does it smell like mushrooms? No, it smells sweet, actually. And by the way, have you ever smelled styrofoam? I often get asked about the texture of the packaging and if it's smooth like plastic. My answer is no, it's soft and even velvety, but it's not plastic. And that's the point. Their next request is often something like, can we make the packaging polka dotted and smell like lavender? You know what? One day we will. But if we want to scale this wonderful natural solution, we have to accept the innovation for what it offers now. Because the core problem is that we let design aesthetics drive priorities when we should be letting our main priority, which is a healthy environment, drive design. For companies, there's a lesson here. The ones that use our material appreciate that it's aesthetically unique, it's got a great story, and most importantly, it keeps products safe during shipment and then returns to the earth. This is not a novel solution. It's a performance and cost-effective drop-in replacement for toxic packaging foams that exist. Putting a solution in customers' hands is far more powerful than any sustainability promises made in a boardroom. By 2050, scientists predict that there will be more plastic in the oceans than fish. This is unacceptable. It's time for a major paradigm shift because packaging should never last longer than its product. We need to embrace the effective, planet-compatible solutions that are out there because they are out there. We've got seaweed to replace plastic bags, packing peanuts made from starch that melt in water, and so much more. Each of these technologies will address different needs for the packaging industry. And there are even more exciting solutions on the horizon. I want to see people energized by the solutions that exist, not paralyzed by the pollution. If we can all learn to value moving in concert with nature, I have no doubt that in time, all industries will eventually align with the needs of the Earth. But time is short. We must act now. We must trust in what nature so brilliantly knows, which is how to design for growth, survival, and a healthy environment. Now I'm making a commitment by taking my late Professor Swerzy's advice and refusing to get caught up in nonsense. And I invite you to join me. Remember when I said that we grew two million pieces of packaging made from mushrooms last year? It may sound like a large number, but next to the problem, it's a drop in the bucket. I'm on a mission to double that number in 2023 and again in 2024 and double it again in 2025 and every year after until we finally end single-use plastics in protective packaging for good. Over the next decade, 
I am going to replace two billion pieces of styrofoam, and I'm going to do it with mushrooms. So here's to 2032, when styrofoam is history and mushrooms rule.